please. All aboard trip 19, eastbound plane for Phoenix, El Paso, Dallas, Nashville, Washington, New York, and all eastern connections is now ready for departure at 1015, gate number three. All aboard, please. Last call. Right here, sir. Oh, thanks. Adjust your safety belt, please. We're taking off in a moment. Oh, right. May I take care of this for you? I know. I'll keep it, thanks. Charm of Inspector Drake still best key to hospitality. Charlie Chen, of all people, how are you? What's brought you here from Honolulu? Officer of law cannot escape long arm of same. Must attend annual police convention in New York. Ah. But how does Scotland Yard excuse your honorable absence? Well, I moved over to the intelligence department a year ago. I wanted to join my regiment, Charlie, when the war broke out. But the higher-ups thought that at my age, I was more valuable in military intelligence. Humble services at disposal of old friends. Thanks, Charlie. I may need them. That's my problem. Sabotage. Investigation has revealed satisfactory clues. Everything points to a man named Paul Narva, whom we're certain who murdered an official of the British Air Ministry three years ago. Narva and his Hindu servant disappeared completely. Ever since that time, similar acts of sabotage have occurred in our colonies and now here in the United States. I'm convinced Narva is the head of the sabotage ring operating in this country. No indication of his present whereabouts? No. But I have his photograph and fingerprints in my briefcase. Covered his tracks very carefully. I'm now following his wife, a former actress, uh, hoping that she'll lead me to him. <laughs> She's given me a merry chase. I followed her to Shanghai, where she was working in a cabaret, to Bombay, where she was a secretary, to Copenhagen, where she was an elevator girl, then back to the Orient and across to San Francisco. I've just received information which leads me to believe that she's in New York. It's like finding a needle in a haystack. Needle can be found when correct thread located. Charlie, I've got to find that thread. British tenacity with Chinese patience, like royal flush in poker game, unbeatable. to New York, Charlie. It's a business of place. What's the huh? case this time? Are you two working together, Mr. Drake? Well, how do you do, Mr. Chan? I'm Inspector Vance. The chief sent me down to welcome you. Most grateful. Very glad to see you again, Mr. Drake. Hi, Vance. Oh, cut it out now, boys. You can get all the photos you want at the convention. Drake, <laughs> why, right. it's good to oh, see you, Kirby. Meet my friend, Mr. Chan. Not the Mr. Chan. Well, this is a pleasure, sir. And Inspector Vance. How do you do? Drop into the convention if you get a chance. Yeah, very kind of. Drake is going to stay at my place. I'm giving a dinner for him tonight. Won't you join us? Oh, I don't think you'll be able to do that. The chief's throwing a banquet. And he'd be pretty disappointed if he didn't show up. Ah, oh, that's too bad. I rather counted on having some news for you later on. Perhaps could leave banquet before after dinner speech is completed. <laughs> oh, I wish I could get out of it. Drop in if you can get away. It's the Courtney Arms Apartments on East 67th Street. I'll appreciate seeing you there. Well, goodbye, then. Good luck in search for thread. <laughs> the car's over here, Charlie. Mr. Drake no longer with Scotland Yard. Yes, I know. He's now with the military intelligence. This police car is yours as long as you stay in New York. Pop! Hey, Pop! Pop! Gosh, I, I almost missed you. What are you doing in New York? Got stuck in a crosstown traffic jam. Please, please, answer question. 
Why are you in New York instead of Los Angeles? Well, my roommate at college was driving east, and he asked me to come along to see the World's Fair. Without permission of humble parent? I read in the paper that he'd be here for the police convention. I knew I could ask him then. Is it all right? Inspector Vance, this is favorite offspring, Jimmy, without whose assistance, many cases would have been solved much sooner. <laughs> Why don't you take him to the banquet with you tonight, Mr. Chan? Say, that'd be great. Good. I have my ticket. I didn't want to go anyhow. Boy, the chief certainly was swell to us tonight. What are you going to do with all your collection of keys to cities? No good as doorstops. Perhaps make excellent teething rings for future grandchildren. Why did we have to leave the banquet so early? Must call on old friend Hugh Drake, formerly of Scotland Yard, for a business chat. You mean you're working on the case already? Gee, then it's a good thing I came here, isn't it? Glad you could come, Mr. Chan. Took liberty of bringing number two son. Fine. Mr. Drake is waiting for you in the library. Thank you. Said he wanted to see you as soon as you arrived. <laughs> well, he must have fallen asleep. Drake. Drake, wake up. Here's your friend Chan. Drake. Mr. Drake dead? Dead? What? Drake. Poor fellow, must have been a heart attack. Did he complain of illness? On the contrary, he was in fine spirits at the dinner party. Can explain why he leave guests? I turned the library over to him as an office. About nine o'clock, he said he had some work to do and just excused himself. Mr. Drake did not leave library? Not that I know of. Curious. Canary bird also dead. That's strange. Canary, unlike faithful dog, do not die for sympathy. Maybe it's just a coincidence. Coincidence, like ancient egg, leave unpleasant odor. Number two son, student of chemistry, can identify strange scent? Gee, Bob, it smells like tetragene. It's a new gas discovered only a few months ago. Description, please. Well, it kills with one whiff, and then evaporates quickly, leaving a slight harmless scent. It's been put up in a glass pellet form. If what he says is true, Drake was murdered. Conclusion correct. But how could anyone get in here? It must have come in through the window. Contradiction, please. Observe. Latch closed. Indicate inside job. You mean that... Killer, enter through door. Suggest you hold all guests. Must telephone Inspector Vance. Is that so? Okay, Carla. Thanks. The autopsy shows gas in both lungs. Tetragene? Yeah, tetragene. Here are the fingerprints of the guests and servants. Check this set with the prints you get on the desk. Yes, sir. Mr. Drake, have you of safe? Yes. Will open, please? Certainly. Check these. These belong to Mr. Drake. 
Passport, traveler's checks, cash. What's this? It's a guest card of the British Imperial Club. I got it for him. No indication of briefcase? No. What briefcase? Mr. Drake carry briefcase on plane contain important evidence. I know, Pop. The guy that removed Drake also removed the briefcase. What do you think, Charlie? It's possible. Well, Inspector Vance, the fingerprints of the guests don't match the ones that we found on the desk. Well, let's see what your guests have to say for themselves. Very well. well let me give you a light, anyhow. Who was murdered? I don't know. Was he really murdered, Inspector? Well, what have you found out? Was it a hot happened, George? We've compared the fingerprints and they don't match with any of yours. That's a relief. Then we may go. Not so fast. I'll have to ask you all some questions. Joe. Yes, Inspector. Your name, please. Herbert Fenton. Oh, this is absurd. Fantastic. English, huh? Is that an offense? Herbert, please. He's not accusing you of anything. I can't stand this confounded questioning. It's ridiculous. You knew Drake? Well, of course I knew him. We were at Oxford together. I haven't seen him for years until tonight. Poor fellow. Inspector, the butler says he has a lot of work to do in the kitchen. Is it okay? Yeah. But first, I'd like to have a little talk with him. What's your name? Uh, Boggs, uh, Robert Boggs. Boggs has been in my employ for three years. I can vouch for him, and a very good butler, too. Uh, thank you, sir. Did you see anyone enter the library after Drake went in? Uh, no, sir. Mr. Kirby sent me on an errand uh, after dinner, sir. That's correct. I found I was out of liquor, and I sent him to the club. Uh, the extra boy uh, served the guests whilst I was away, sir. Let's have a talk with him. I dismissed him just after Boggs returned. There was a desk? Uh, yes, sir. It's, uh... Give it to him. Pat, pick him up and bring him here. Yes, sir. Please, did Mr. Drake request presence of any of your guests? Why, oh, yes. Besides Mr. Fenton, he asked me to invite Miss Preston. Recognize Miss Preston as most excellent actress. Yes, she is. And he also asked me to invite Mr. Percy, who is chief designer at the Metropolitan Aircraft Corporation, of which I am president. The only reason why Drake wanted to see you? Only that I believe he was investigating sabotage. Did you talk about that? No. May I ask a question? Sure, go ahead. Bomber crashed yesterday at your plant? Yes, unfortunately. Probably some more of that fifth column work. This is Keith Jeffrey, stockbroker. Today at lunch, he told me he read that Drake was staying with me. Yes, I heard a good deal about him on the other side, and I was anxious to make his acquaintance. Mr. Kirby was kind enough to invite me to dinner. Then this evening was the first time you've ever seen Drake. That's right. Then when he leaves Miss Preston. Uh, Miss Preston. Yes? Was there any special reason why Mr. Drake wanted to see you? Not that I know of. Never heard of him until tonight. Did you talk with him this evening? He sat next to me at dinner, but uh, didn't say anything of particular interest. Well, it seems that's all she can tell us. May I help, please? That's very kind of you. Miss Preston play engagement in Honolulu last season. Why, yes. I stopped off on my way to Australia. Very beautiful lavalier. Thank you. Too bad. One pearl missing. What? That's strange. I didn't notice it when I put it on tonight. Exhausted. I wonder how much longer they're going to keep us here. Drake probably died a natural death. This inspector's trying to make a mystery of it. It's the only way he can keep his job. The market's been very sluggish lately, but I think I'll have some interesting news through shortly. But I do, I'll let you both know about it. Did any of the guests leave this room after Drake went to the library? I couldn't say. Anybody could have gone out of the room. Well, I didn't. Well, I didn't either. Hey, Pop! Here's your criminal! I caught him opening this cablegram. It was Drake. In Scotland Yard. Acknowledge inquiry regarding Robert Boggs. We'll forward information immediately. 
The kid's right. Drake must have suspected Boggs and cable the yard. Boggs found it out and killed him. I didn't. I had nothing to do with it. Can you explain tampering with cablegram? Mr. Drake thought he'd seen me somewhere before and questioned me. I was arrested in England for a crime I didn't commit. When that cable came from Mr. Drake, I was afraid it was about me. Take him to headquarters for further questioning. Well, I guess I won't need your guests any longer. Let me have your addresses and phone numbers before you go. Well, that's I hope I have the pleasure of seeing you again, Mrs. Fenton. Oh, I hope so. We must meet. I haven't anything to write my address on. Please. Thank you, Mr. Chen. Inspector, will you a piece of paper, something to write on? Ah, <coughs> may I? Thank you. Here you are, Inspector. Good night, Mr. Chen. Good night. You can get in touch with me at the plant, Inspector. There you are. I told you it was ridiculous asking all those questions. I only wrote down my office address, Inspector. Is that all right? It'll be okay. Good night, George. Thank you. I'll have to ask you not to leave the city. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, Charlie, looks like a cut and dried case. Say, Pop, I spotted that butler right off the bat. Didn't let him out of my sight. You're all right, kid. Number two, son, very promising detective. Promise very much. Produce very little. Inspector <laughs> Bear. Stop pushing me. Come on, come on. No, no. Here he is, the extra boy. What do you want with me? I ain't done nothing. Get Nobody. Him Get him in. Nobody. I won't make me up here. Get that. his fingerprints. I ain't no criminal, mister. Pipe down. You saved the guest when Boggs was out, didn't you? Yes, sir, but I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing about nothing, sir. I was completely in the dark. Condition appear contagious. Did you see any of them go to the library? No, sir. No one went in. Mr. Drake didn't want to be disturbed. How did you know that? He told me that when I brought a visitor to see him. Visitor? What visitor? Well, a young man showed up here and said he had to see Mr. Drake urgent. And I showed him right on in. Young man give name? Yes, sir. Mr. David Elliott. Hmm. You never told us anything about this. I don't know, David Elliott. Hmm. Say, Pop, what do you think about this? Thought at present like dog chasing own tail, getting no place. Vance speaking. Check up on a young man named David Elliott. Here's his description. What did he look like? Well, he was slim and tall and dark, rather dark. And when Drake learned why I came, he insisted on seeing you right away. I told him you had nothing to do with the murder of that British air official. What did he say to that? It's your husband, Paul Narva, he's after, and he's sure you know where he is. Well, I don't. I know that, but Drake doesn't believe it. And he swears he'll never let up until he finds you. Well, he'll trail you and catch me. Can't you see? There's nothing left for me to do but go away at once. Look, Pat, I'm in love with you, and I'll never let you run away again. Listen, there's only one thing left to do. You've got to see Drake tomorrow and tell him everything. Oh, no, David. I'm afraid to do that. There's nothing to be afraid of. You're innocent, and we'll prove it. <sighs> Most of the Elliots we checked on are older men, but the one that comes nearest the description you gave me is 28 years old, 6 feet tall, black hair, and, uh... Sounds like the Elliot we're after. What's his business? Chemical research? I got it. Elliot is really Narvo. He made the pellet that killed Drake, and Mr. Kirby's butler is working for him. What's his address? No, I'll take care of it myself. Well, looks like the kid's right again, Charlie. It's the easiest nut I ever cracked. Not easy to crack, often empty. <laughs> You're dead right, Jimmy. I've been on many a job that's looked easy, and then taken months to solve. Oh, say, Charlie, do you mind sticking around for a while and giving me a hand, just in case? Mr. Drake, very old friend. Most happy to lend assistance. I'll pick up Elliot and let you know how I make out. Oh, uh, when will I call you? Why don't you wait here for Inspector Vance's call, Mr. Chan? I also would like to hear the results. Okay. I'll phone you here. May you use pen and ink, please? Of course. Help yourself. Thank you. Must send cablegram to honorable spouse. May be detained in New York. Don't forget to tell Mom that I'm helping you. And give her my love. We'll inform honorable mother that aid from number two son like interest on mortgage, impossible to escape.
How did that get in there? Already observed pearl missing from lavalier worn by Miss Preston. Then she must have been in this room with Drake. I didn't know she came in here to see him. She's hiding something. I'll bet she's in on it too. Have Miss Preston's address? Yes, Roxbury House in Sutton Place. Come on, Pop, let's get going. Number two, son, get going to bed. Oh, but I'm not tired. Fresh weed better than wilted rose. We'll need alert brain tomorrow. When Inspector Vance call, please inform him we'll meet him at office. I will. Mr. Chan. Well, won't you come in, Mr. Chan? Humbly apologize for late intrusion. Well, that's quite all right. Please sit down. Thank you so much. Most charming apartment. Thank you. Can only stay a moment. Have found missing pearl? Why, no. May see lavalier? Certainly. I think you may have pleasant surprise. Why, that's very kind of you, Mr. Chan, to go to all this trouble. Where did you find it? Mr. Kirby's library. Library? Why, how did it get there? Person who asked riddles should know answer. It's a mystery to me. Perhaps prefer to discuss mystery directly with police? No. I was in the library, but I had nothing to do with the murder. Mr. Drake asked about a girl who played in a show with me in London five years ago. He wanted to know if I'd seen her in New York. I told him I hadn't. You were concealing truth? Mr. Chan, she's a very good friend of mine, and I didn't want to give her away. She's had so much trouble already, and I'm certain she's innocent. If friend is innocent, can trust humble self to help prove same. Will give name, please? Patricia West. She lives in a rooming house at 21 Washington Square. 21 Washington Square. Thank you. Mr. Chan, you will help her, won't you? We'll do humble best. Good night, Mr. Chan. Good night. Thank you so much. believes humble self can be of service. Won't you come in? Thank you. I am Lieutenant Chan of Honolulu Police. Please? Oh, what do you want with me? Mr. Drake was murdered tonight. Murdered? I, you think I had something to do with it? No. Merely wish to ask whereabouts of Paul Narvo. I don't know Paul Narvo. You were married to him. You leave London with him after murder of government official. 
Please. Would like to be your friend. Happy solution never see light if truth kept in dark. Won't you please confide in me? Where you first meet, Mr. Narvo? Well, in London. I was working in a show. Yes? He was very charming, knew the best people, took me every place, and... Well, I was swept off my feet, and we were married. You remain in show? No, he made me give it up. Nothing was too good for me. Jewelry, beautiful flat in Berkeley Square, maids, valets, all that sort of thing. One night, a few weeks later, he came home and was very excited and told me we had to leave immediately for India on urgent business. He revealed nature of business? No, but he seemed unusually interested in aviation. So? He was always inviting airplane men to parties. Then one day in Calcutta, his Hindu servant Ramula arrived. Same servant you have in London? Yes. Late that night, I heard them discussing the murder of the air ministry official. So? Well, I, I... I knew they were mixed up in it. Why you not inform police? Oh, I, I confronted my husband, but he threatened to kill me if I breathed a word. He kept me a prisoner for days. But I managed to escape from there, and then I wandered from one place to another. Once he almost caught me in Cape Town, where I was working as a manicurist, but I got away from there, and... Then Mr. Drake started to hound me, and now... Gee, Pop, I almost got the killer. Contradiction, please. Killer almost get you. Excuse, this is number two, son. How do you do? I'm supposed to be in bed, but I knew Papa needed some help. You follow me all evening? Yeah, I spotted some guy trailing you, so I waited until I got the goods on him. Please disregard merchandise. Much better you identify assailant. Well, he looked like an Indian or something. Indian? Possibly mean East Indian. Hindu? Yeah, that's right, a Hindu. Ramula. Who's Ramula? Narvo's servant. Paul Narvo must be in New York. Quite possible. Must inform Inspector Vance immediately. Now, Miss West, you still insist that you haven't seen Narvo in New York? Yes. Well, we picked up a man who I'm sure is your husband. Now, this guy's fingerprints match those on the desk where Drake was found dead. But so far, he won't talk. I want you to identify him. Jack, bring Narvo in. Oh, please, Mr. Chan, I... Well? What's the matter? Surprised to see your wife? I don't know this young lady. David, what's happened? What's this all about? Darling, I've told them everything. Who is this guy? Well, his name is David Elliott. And he did go see Mr. Drake about me this evening. But he had nothing to do with the murder. Well, maybe he didn't. Well, he was the last person seen in the library with Drake. And Drake was killed with the same newfangled poison gas that we found in Elliott's lab. Maybe that Hindu sneaked into the library after Mr. Elliott left. Yeah. You dispose of poison gas to Hindu customer recently? No, neither to a Hindu nor anyone else. I was secretly experimenting with it as a base for a powerful explosive. Well, maybe I'm wrong about you being Narvo. But we'll have to hold you just the same. But why? Well, I've got to make sure he's telling the truth, don't I? Oh, Mr. Chan. Please, be patient. Inspector Vance only doing routine duty. Flynn, I want every Hindu in town rounded up. All the Hindu? New York? Yes, that's what I said, every Hindu. And have them all in the lineup tomorrow. Quiet! Will you get on your feet and get back there? Pipe down and get back there. Yeah, she's you pipe down. Whew. I never knew there were so many Hindus in New York. Number two son still not recognized as Salem? They're all beginning to look alike to me. Hey, Frank, how many more of these Alababas are there? That's the last bunch, Inspector. Hey, you with the raincoat. Step out. Left hand. Hmm. 
Well, what's your racket? Racket? I do not understand, Sahib. I am Hindu Fakir. Faker's right. My dear sir, you are laboring under a delusion. You have the honor of addressing the great Rashid, Grand Lama, the sacred cult of psychic believers. Through me, souls are cleansed. Wait a minute, buddy. We're going to start with a little cleansing of your mud. Come on, sit down. Wait, cut it out. I'll get a heavy coffee on you, cut it out. Wait a minute, I'm a citizen. Cut it out. Cut it out, will you? Well, this is Shorty McCoy, the Canarsie kid. He makes a living feeding suckers phony religion. And I can't make an honest liver no more. Get him out of here. I'll go, but this is my bread and butter. Get out. I got connections, don't forget that. <laughs> I'm going to pull a fast one, Charlie. Watch this. Romella, step forward. What are you guys trying to do? Kid me? But, sir, all of our names are Romula. Excuse, please. Romula, most common Hindu name. That's the guy. You mean this one here? Yeah. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. Okay, take him in my office. I am honest man, sir. I do nothing wrong. Oh, this I... is outrageous. Joe, oh, get rid of this crowd. This way. Mr. Get up there. You're the guy that slugged me. Now look here, kid. Why don't you make up your mind? You just said that guy did it. Well, I thought it was him until I saw this bird. Energetic detective seems to have as much difficulty making decision as fly in bakery shop. Well, gee, Bob, it was kind of dark, and this guy moved awful fast. This young man is mistaken. I've never seen him before. Are you positive this time? I've never been so sure of anything in all my life. All right. Take him to my office. Come on. But hold on to that other fella. This kid may change his mind again. This young fellow says you attacked him last night. That's ridiculous. Who are you and what's your business? I'm a reputable dealer in Oriental Curios. Here is my card, sir. I guess Singe. Singe. Mm. Where were you last night, Mr. Singe? I was in my shop holding an auction. Where's your shop? At 214 East Trestle Street. What time was the auction over? About 11 o'clock. Any of 50 people can tell you that. Well, you seem to have a very good alibi. Anyway, it'll be easy to check on. Gosh, Pop, I guess I'm wrong again. Okay, that'll be all. I'm sorry we troubled you. Show him out and bring the other man in. Say, Pop, I must have been right the first time. Ramula! Is he dead? Yes, he's dead all right. You are all right? Yes, thank you. Please, sit down. That was quick work, Bill. I didn't have a chance to get my gun out. Murphy got him. I didn't fire. I was afraid I'd hit the kid. Well, then who shot him? Please, shots come from outside. One kill Ramula, other intended for Mrs. Narvo. They must have come from that warehouse. See the windows open. That's where they came from, all right. I'll have it searched. No. Gee, Pop, aren't you going to help them find the killer? Honorable police, quite capable of conducting search without humble selves. You are a very brave girl. We'll not call upon you to face other suspects tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chan. Suggest you give police protection to Mrs. Narvo. Will you please excuse me, have earnest desire to visit East Indian Curio Shop. Good night. Good night. Gee, Bob, somebody got here ahead of us.
gun have more authority than whole army with no ammunition? I'll never go on a case like this again without a gat. More interested to learn what mysterious visitors seek to destroy. Gee, Pop, what would a curio dealer be doing with a laboratory? Come on. Say, that's the same kind of glass pellet that the Tetra team was in. Curio shop evidently disguised for manufacture of deadly gas. Perhaps search of office will reveal formula. Look, kerosene. Gosh, if we'd have been a little later, Narva or whoever it was would have destroyed all the evidence. Did you find something, Pop? Look for other pieces. Are these the ones? Here's the formula for tetragene. I knew Romola was the one who made those pellets. This is plan of New Bomber, similar to one destroyed two days ago. Just as I figured, Romola was really mixed up in this sabotage plot. Our late honorable friend, Mr. Drake, evidently on correct path. Suggest we take this evidence to Inspector Vance at once. Come. Finding that stuff at Romola's shop sure puts Elliot in the clear. No use holding him any longer. That fellow's as innocent as I am. Has number two son forgotten he already accused Mr. Elliot of being novel? Oh, gee, Pop, I can't be right all the time. Well, anyhow, I'll bet you Boggs is mixed up in this. I got it. Boggs is really Narvo, and Romolo was his servant. Boggs is also okay. What? This cable came from Scotland Yard tonight. Recent information proves Robert Boggs falsely convicted. This will please Kirby. He's been following me ever since we locked Boggs up, saying he was sure he was innocent. Mr. Kirby anxious to have servant released? Yes, yeah, so as soon as I got the cable, I let him go. How long since, please? Mm, about an hour ago. Say, you don't think the guy that gave this slip at Romulus could be Boggs? Anything can happen in hours' time. Inspector? Inspector, there's a guy outside that's driving me nuts. Says he's got to see you right now so we can go back to work. You know I'm busy, Bill. Find out if the laboratory has a report yet and have Elliot release. Okay, but that guy gives me the will. He's talking about a briefcase I've lost to some stiff in the morgue. Bill, will you do... What? Why, you dummy! That's what we're looking for! Drake's briefcase! Where is this guy? Bring him in here! Get in. Come on, come on. Well, well? I'm Frankie O'Shaughnessy, Inspector, and I've been waiting to see you for over 34 minutes. Yeah, yeah, go on, go on. Well, I'm from the British Imperial Club, see? Now, I'm not English, understand. I just work there in the check room on the night shift. Never mind the details. What's this about a briefcase? Well, I'm getting to that. About 5.30 yesterday afternoon, just after I came on duty, some tall guy that I'd never seen before comes in and checks a briefcase with me. He wasn't a regular member of the club, so I asked him his name. It was Hugh Drake, so... Yeah, that's right. So I checked it for him. And boy, did I get a shock tonight when I see his picture in the paper and read that he's been murdered. So that was in the morning papers. Why didn't you contact us before? Well, I never buy a paper in the morning, because then I can read them all at night at the club for nothing. Hey, I gotta be getting back to work. Briefcase still in check room? Oh, yes, sir. I'm holding it there. Nice work, kid. Say, we didn't find a check among Drake's effects. Uh, pardon me, Inspector. Here's that report from the laboratory. Hmm. Well, the formula says it was tetragene, all right, Charlie. The only fingerprints on those bomber plans match Romulus. Would suggest we all return with boy to British Imperial Club and examine contents of briefcase. Sure. Now it'll be easy. With Narvel's photograph and fingerprints, it'll be a cinch. All right, let's go. You stay with driver. Oh, but, Pop, I want to be in on this, too. Door of opportunity swing both ways. Much better you stay and watch for suspects. Okay, Pop, you can count on me. I won't let you down. Doubles again. <laughs> I certainly am lucky tonight. Say you are. Well, that's a little better. Now, will you accept a double? No, no, you're too lucky for me. I've never seen such dice. 
Got me for 120 already. Oh, come now. Just one more game. Perhaps your luck will change. I've been looking for that for the last half hour. No, I really must get home, Fenton. I'm late now. I have an appointment with my broker. Your broker? This time of night? Hot tip on the market, eh? Perhaps you'll let a fellow in on it. I will if it's any good. <laughs> nice of you to have invited me, Mr. Fenton. You have a very beautiful club. Sure it is. Boy! Boy! Boy, I say boy! A uh, hat. Well, your checks, Mr. Fenton. What? Huh? Oh, blast. What have I done, these confounded things? Uh, oh, here they are. I want to thank you for a very pleasant evening. Well, not at all. I'm sorry Kirby couldn't come along. He's terribly upset about that awful tragedy of Drake's murder, you know. Yes, I know. I hope they solve it soon. Well, if you ask my opinion, it'll take a smarter man than that stupid inspector. Can I give you a lift? Oh, I wouldn't think of taking you out of your way. I'll call a taxi. Oh, not at all. I... Oh, I've forgotten something. <laughs> Excuse me. Good night. Good night. Say, hey, boy. Boy, I've forgotten something. I had a check somewhere from... something I left yesterday. What the... Di there it is. Yeah, that's it. Thanks. For a minute, I thought we had something, Charlie. Wishful thinking sometimes lead to blind alley. Please, you have keys found on Drake's bunny? Hmm. Perhaps try a smaller key. This does it. Excuse me. I'm Mr. Kirby's butler. I've come to pick up a briefcase. Uh, thank you. Why didn't you let me grab him? Perhaps wishful thinking about to be fulfilled. And to think I had that guy sprung. Come. I saw a very suspicious looking character with a beard and a mustache. Yeah, but I'm afraid you have already missed bus. Follow that cab and don't lose it. Stairs. Oh, Bart. What's the matter with the bell? I've been pressing it for several minutes without any answer. I didn't know it was out of order, sir. I'll have it attended to immediately. I have some papers here Mr. Kirby asked me to bring over. Well, he wasn't home when I left, sir. Good evening, Mr. Jeffrey. Oh, uh, good evening, gentlemen. What's this, another investigation? Maybe. Uh, merely making friendly call on Mr. Kirby. Will you come in, gentlemen, please? Say, Pop, they both got briefcases. Must compliment Sprout on keen observation. Excuse. Can explain possession of check to redeem briefcase owned by Mr. Drake? Mr. Drake? I didn't know he belonged to him. As soon as I was released tonight, I came back here to resume my duties. But Mr. Kirby wasn't here, but he left me a message asking me to go at once to the club and fetch this briefcase. The check was with the note, sir. May I see the note? Uh, yes, sir. It's over here on this table where Mr. Kirby always leaves his messages. Uh, 
Thank you so much. Uh, will you tell Mr. Kirby we'd like to see him? Uh, yes, sir. Will you gentlemen make yourselves comfortable in the living room? Please. May I take a brief kiss? Uh, yes, certainly, sir. You handled all of uh, Mr. Kirby's stock transactions, I believe. That's right. I've got Mr. Percy's account, too. As a matter of fact, I have an appointment with him at his home right now. Keeps you pretty busy, doesn't it? <laughs> it certainly does. Trying to keep ahead of the stock market these days is no joke. Uh, gentlemen, Mr. Kirby is not in the library. He's no doubt in the bedroom. I'll go and see. May I take liberty of examining papers, please? Of course. There's nothing confidential about them. This is sample of Mr. Kirby's handwriting? Yes, those are his notes. Notes supposedly written by Mr. Kirby to Butler resemble this handwriting, but close scrutiny reveals slight difference. What? Heavily crossed T's in note to Boggs, not evident in stock notations. By Jove, you're right, Mr. Chan. Kirby didn't write that. Are you positive? Absolutely. Uh, excuse me. I'm afraid Mr. Kirby is not at home. I looked all over the apartment. Mr. Kirby asked you to meet him here? Yes, he telephoned me about 15 minutes ago. Said it was very important I get these papers here right away. Was he at home when he called you? Yes, I presume so. Well, I'm late for my other appointment now. And Mr. Kirby comes in, tell him those are the papers he wanted. Oh, Mr. Chan, if I can be of any further assistance to you, you can reach me at Mr. Percy's home. I'll be there for about an hour. Thank you. Find what we're looking for, Charlie? Sincerely hope so. Excellent likeness of Hindu servant Ramula. Mrs. Narvo assumed many aliases hoping to avoid husband. Well, never mind them. Let's see Narvo. Say, Pop, that guy doesn't look like anybody in this case. Do you think we're on the wrong track, Charlie? Must have patience. But if that's a photograph of Narvo, we're completely off. Narvo fingerprint. Faces may alter, but fingerprint never lie. Suggest comparison with fingerprints of all suspects. Yes, and the sooner the better. I'll give it to the driver. I'll take it for you. All right, thanks, Jimmy. Tell him see they get to fingerprint expert immediately. Say it's for the Drake case. Yes, sir. But don't let anything happen until I get back. Please apply same caution to self. Oh, you know you can trust me, Pop. Gentlemen, care to have a drink while you're waiting for Mr. Kirby? Say, that's a swell idea. I'll have a rum Collins. How about you, Charlie? Nothing, thanks. Very good, sir. Obama. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Will you make that discussion, sir? Uh, certainly, sir. Charlie. like Kirby had company tonight. What the? Kirby? Dead? Deadly poison dropped into brandy. Oh, 
How about this one? Brandy only. Killer evidently on very friendly terms with victim. Admit number two son. Somebody socked me on the head and stole the briefcase. What? Catch glimpse of assailant? No, just as I stepped in the elevator, he caught me. I just came to. Then they got away with our only evidence. What are we going to do now, Charlie? Have addresses of suspects given you night of Drake murder? Yeah. What are you going to do with them? Telephone. Say, that's a swell idea. You're going to call up and find out if those birds are home. Which one are you calling? Mr. Fenton, first on this. Hello. May I speak to Mr. Fenton, please? Well, wake him up. Most important. Huh? Who is it? What? Well, what is it? I've retired for the night. So sorry to disturb you, Mr. Fenton. Merely wish to ask minor question. Unimportant. Can wait until morning. Of all the confounded stupidity, calling me up in the middle of the night to tell me he can wait till the morning. Who was it, Snooky? That blasted Oriental calls himself a detective. Oh. Are you checking to see if Jeffrey does have an appointment with Percy? Hello. Lieutenant Chan calling Mr. Percy. Oh, Mr. Chan. Uh, this is Jeffrey speaking. Uh, and by the way, has uh, Kirby shown up yet? Oh, uh, yes, Mr. Jeffrey. Uh, he is here. Uh, may I speak with Mr. Percy, please? Why, certainly. Oh, Ralph, Mr. Chan wants to speak to you. He's at Kirby's place. Yes, Mr. Chan, what can I do for you? I'm at your disposal any time but tomorrow morning. We're testing a new bomber at 10 o'clock, TR-4. Maybe you'd like to see it. Most interested. Could extend invitation to other friends? Why don't you ask Mr. Kirby? I'm sure it'll be all right. He invited all the guests who attended the dinner he gave for Mr. Drake the other night. Thank you so much. We'll be pleased to see you at airport. And good night. Think it wise to withhold news of Kirby's death until later. Yes, but we're not getting anywhere. Fenton's at home. Jeffrey's with Percy. Who are you calling now? Mr. Elliot, who does not answer ring of telephone. We'll call on Mr. Elliot tonight. Perhaps Mr. Boggs like to witness test flight of bomber plane tomorrow. Oh. Why, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Please make certain all suspects at Metropolitan Airport tomorrow. What are we going to do? Have a family picnic? Very good idea. Perhaps locate bad egg in picnic baskets. Are you going to have it ready to go out in the morning? Yeah. Just got a couple of things to check on the inside, and she'll be all set. Boss expecting a lot from this gentleman. He won't be disappointed. See you in the morning. Want a better place for that? This worked before. It can't fall off the ledge while the ship's level are climbing. But when it goes into a dive, it'll roll off and smash, see? Fine job you've got there. Splendid. Thank you. I hope she performs as well as she looks. Well, I don't know what's holding them up. Well, there's a car coming now. Good morning, Mr. Chan. Where's Mr. Kirby? Mr. Kirby will be delayed. 
request you take charge and proceed without him. Oh, so sorry. Uh, Miss West, this is Mr. Percy, designer of bomber TR-4. How do you do, Miss West? How do you do? Oh, believe you have not met everyone. Please. Pat, what are you doing here? Uh, Miss West, also interested in witnessing test flight. Uh, Mr. Fenton. Miss West, may I present Mr. Fenton? I'm delighted to meet you, Miss West. How do you do? I would like to know what's so important that you had to call me in the middle of the night. So sorry, but important events like insistent alarm clock demand attention. We'll explain soon. Uh, Mr. Jeffrey. Miss West, uh, Mr. Jeffrey. I'm glad to meet you. How do you do? How would you people like to see what the interior of a bomber looks like? Oh, that's a splendid idea. Would you mind if I went along too, sir? Not at all. Glad to have you. Thank you, sir. Come this way. I'm coming too, Mr. Percy. Who's the man with the derby? Mr. Kirby's butler. Name is Boggs. Oh. Did you spot your husband? No. None of them resemble Paul. Charlie, I told you this was a wild goose chase. You did not recognize anything? Voice? Mannerism, perhaps? No, I'm sorry. I'd certainly know him if I saw him. I easily deceived. Same leopard can hide beneath different spots. I don't know why you're so sure one of these guys is Narvo. May be mistaken, but all facts point to that conclusion. Please remain with Mrs. Narvo. Have urgent desire to inspect Palmer. I don't get it. doesn't seem to be working, Mr. Percy. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll have to ask you not to play with those dials. It's a very delicate instrument. Please, keep hands in pockets. Own pockets. <laughs> Hi, Joe, Ralph. The equipment's magnificent. Yes, there seems to be everything here but the kitchen stove. Kitchen stove, most excellent weapon. Good for cooking goose. <laughs> <laughs> After all, I thought this was a fighting machine. Where are the bombs, torpedoes, death-dealing devices, and all that sort of thing? Sorry, Mr. Fenton. These planes are never armed until after the test flight. The mountings for the guns are installed, however. Sorry, I'll have to ask you not to smoke here. Is the bomb release control up here? No, and like the speed of these ships, that cannot be disclosed. There's so many secret agents operating these days, we can't be too careful. Do you really believe that sabotage was responsible for the crash of the TR-3 the other day? Well, from all indications, it would appear so. However, we can't be too sure. Excuse me, please. Uh, gentlemen, this is Lieutenant Cooper, our uh, test pilot. Oh, how, how do you do? do? How do you do? Hiya. Sure got to hand it to you fellas, risking your necks this way. Oh, you're doing it for bread and butter. You don't think much about it, Sonny. Anything to make a living, huh? Well, Mr. Kirby said he just wanted a preliminary test this morning. That's right. I take her up to about 15,000 feet before you die. 15,000 feet? That's almost three miles. <laughs> okay, Mr. Percy. Boy, I'm glad I'm not going up with you. Well, I guess if we've got enough of these planes, there won't be anything to worry about from the rest of the world. Should leave plane now? Oh, there's plenty of time. They're just warming up the motors. However, I'll make sure.
We're going to land. Come on. You'll have time to talk with you. You are surprised to see us alive, Mr. Fenton. Pellet merely contain harmless substitute supplied by chemist Mr. Elliot at my request. Will you get a room where I can question this guy, Fenton? Yeah, she can use my office. Okay, Charlie, bring the rest of them over. Come on. Well, it certainly worked all right. I was beginning to think he wasn't going to give himself away. Desire to live, still strongest instinct in man. Nice work, Pop. Just a moment, Mr. Chan. You mean to say you planted that pellet in the plane? Trick sometimes necessary in order to trap criminal. Stolen plans of TR-4 led to search of bomber last night, revealing presence of deadly pellet. So you thought you were clever, huh? Say, listen, buddy, I spotted you from the time I saw you in Kirby's apartment at the party for Drake. You arrest two mechanics employed by Fenton to sabotage planes? Yeah, we got them all right. Here they come now. Say, one of those guys was sent by Fenton to take the briefcase away from Boggs. Yeah, that's right. This one here. Take him by the headquarters. Come on. But, Pop, how'd you get on to Fenton? When compared address given Inspector Vance with forged note left for Boggs. Handwriting identical. But Mr. Chan didn't think that was evidence enough. So he had Mr. Percy send everyone on the test flight. Just so you'd convict yourself. Then he's the one who poisoned Mr. Kirby. What? Kirby dead too? Kirby? I didn't do it. I swear I didn't do it. No? Then who did? I can't tell you. I wrote the note, but I'm not guilty of murder. Sit down. I tell you, I swear. Now look. Drake is killed because he's investigating sabotage. Ramola is shot just when we're going to make him talk. Then Kirby gets knocked off so we won't know about the briefcase. And you say you're not guilty of murder? One moment, Inspector. Mr. Fenton telling truth. What? Merely carried out orders of real killer, Paul Narvo. You mean, he's not Narvo? Master criminal known to be much younger. This man merely trusted Confederate. Oh, so you know who Narvo really is then, huh? Well, we'll soon get that out of you. You better start talking, Fenton. You'll kill me if I tell you. Yes, sir. These would suggest moments rest. Would someone kindly get Mr. Fenton a drink of water? Charlie, will you let me handle this my way? No, I'll take it, sir. Well, here you are, sir. One moment, please. What's the matter? Contains same poison that killed Mr. Kirby. Thank you so much, Mr. Narvo. Why, you... <laughs> Desperate attempt to silence Mr. Fenton reveal you to be head of sabotage ring. Try to poison me, would you? Yes, he's Narvo, all right. How can he be Narvo? His own wife didn't recognize him. Mr. Narvo's countenance completely rebuilt through plastic surgery on account of serious automobile accident. Operation on throat, altered tone of voice, but inability to change fingerprints force him to have briefcase stolen. No doubt he planned to escape before a duplicate set of prints can be forwarded from Scotland Yard. But Mr. Fenton's arrest caused him to fear immediate exposure. So you made Narvo give himself away by letting him have a chance to poison Fenton? Charlie, I've got to hand it to you. Oh, this was an easy case, Inspector. You ought to be with us on a tough one sometime. Confidence of favorite son, like courage of small boy at dentist, most evident after tooth extracted.
like you crave that corn when it's freshly bobbed. You gotta beat it to the box with the butter on the top. Get with it, man. Start strolling down to the sweets that you're rolling, the best in town. Our candy's real gone, if I'm understood. To all you squares, that means the confection is positively delicious. Cork that stuff. Give me five. Let me send you into this nutty jive. <laughs> Shake it on down to this cool snack bar. Come on, Jill, give us a treat. A friendly pepper upper with a tasty beat. Drink Dr. Pepper, Dr. Dr. Pepper, cause it never lets you down. Frosty, man, frosty. Uh, no, thank you. Uh, please send to Hotel Mazarin. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Don't put that away. Give me something, please. I'm desperate. Reggie's not permitted here. Get out. Please. It is always good fortune to give arms upon entering the city. Thanks, brother. Come on, move on. All Get right. Out. All right. just arrived. May I see you, please? I'm leaving for the show now. I think I've really discovered something. I have a record of all the... Please, no more talk now. We'll see you after show at Le Sage Bleu. Thank you. Goodbye. See you later. Please, to this address. Are you all right, sir? Yes. Please drive to address given. Yes, sir.
Charlie Chan. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> well, well, give me your hat. <laughs> Go. Gee, it's great to see you again. Much pleasure to see you. <laughs> Go right on in. You sit down. Make yourself at home. Uh, thank you so much. Dad said in his letter you were here for a holiday. Yes. Only business in Paris is vacation. <laughs> well, you deserve one after that job in London. All the papers were full of it. Papers exaggerate importance of humble efforts. I wired Dad I'd take good care of you. We're going to have a great time. So kind. But first, one little item of business. Must open account at La Matine Bank. Oh, that's easy. I'll arrange an appointment for you to meet the head of the bank himself. Paul Lamartine? None other. <laughs> I work there, you know. Dad's one of the directors, so it occurred to him that I should go and do likewise. Uh, you are bank director? <laughs> oh, no. In 20 years, maybe. Dad has the old-fashioned idea that I ought to start at the bottom and work up. Yes. Uh, young bird must learn to fly. <laughs> Every day from nine till five. <laughs> but after that, my time's my own, and I'm going to spend it getting you into mischief. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, mischief sounds nice. Uh, then you will arrange interview? When? Tomorrow morning at 10. That is very good. Oh, you're not going. Uh, how about a little drink? Uh, no, thank you. Some other time. <laughs> Ooh, wait a minute, Charlie. Here, here are some friends of mine. One of them is very important. Yes? I want you to meet her. Oh. What is this? What do you want? Boo! <laughs> we want a drink. Don't we, old partner? We certainly do. Now, you sit down right here. Hello, <laughs> Thank you. May I introduce Mr. Chan? Ms. Lamartine. How do you do? Ms. Shekhar. How do you do? And Mr. Max Corday. How do you do? Mr. Chan is from Honolulu, an old friend of my father's here on a vacation. Oh? Me very happy know you. Maybe you like to have a little glinky? Very happy to make acquaintance of a charming gentleman. Me no like a glinky now, perhaps later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I know I need a drink. Help yourself. There's a cold bottle right there. Good. Me like a glinky now. All I mean, toy. <laughs> Charlie, Yvette is the important one. Much pleasure to meet. Thank you. <laughs> you tonic for old blood. Well, you're not old at all. Well, maybe not hot, but joints sometime argue matter. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, we're engaged. Oh, that is good. <laughs> May I congratulate? Thank you. Come here, forward march. <laughs> Come here. Oh. <laughs> uh, in excitement of happy party, we'll not forget the appointment at bank. Oh, Victor Descartes never forgets. Do I, darling? <laughs> Leave it to Victor always to get more business in the family bank. Why not? <laughs> to Mr. Chan's holiday in Paris. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, you will excuse, please? Uh, must go now. Uh, wait a minute. Oh, don't move, Mr. Chan. Hold it. Just a minute now. Oh, huh? he's at it again. That's, that's <laughs> right, Mr. Chan. Hold it there. there. A few swift, bold strokes from him. There you are. A little souvenir of your first night in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> Most clever, excellent likeness of rotund Chinese. <laughs> I may keep. By all means. Why, someday those little sketches of Max Corday may be priceless treasures. Uh -huh. uh, thank you so much. I must not intrude any longer. Oh, come along, Johnny. Why not join us? Yes, do. We'd love to have you. Some other time, please. Have heard so much about thrilling dancer at Le Singe Bleu. Uh, have desired to see. Great. I know if Mr. Chan won't join us, we'll join him. Good idea? Great idea. Absolutely. Absolutely. Then we'll hear us to the Singe Bleu. <laughs> the Singe yeah. Bleu. <laughs> Blow. 
up, folks. Here we are. Hop <laughs> <laughs> the jump on the other one. Come on. Come on, Mr. Chad. Thank you so much. Come on, John. They all have it. I don't mind. Where? Oh, here. Here. Look out, you. Where you're going. I think the sidewalk belongs to you. Uh, none of that, no. I'll call the policeman. Wait just a minute, old man. Here. Here, old fellow. Run along and buy yourself a drink. And don't be so belligerent. We're not the enemy, you know. Thanks. All right. All right. What a horrible man. Yes, most unfortunate. Well, pardon the interruption, folks. Let's not have it spoil the fun. Come on. Come on. He's at it again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> really good. You like? And you? How you like my bold strokes, my darling? <laughs> Not too bold. Oh, that was lovely. Too bad you don't dance, Mr. Chan. Uh, mud turtle in pond. More safe than men on horseback. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have that little star whose interpretation of the dance of Pash I know will thrill you, Mademoiselle Nardi. <laughs>
so sorry. Well, apartment. Look for all letters, papers, photographs, address books. I'll examine them at my office. Recipe for apple pie. Mm, great work, Laverne. Chinese incense burner. <laughs> Reminds me of my old friend Charlie Chan's in town. I wonder what he's doing. Solved the stable murder mystery in London, didn't he? Yeah. Great work it was, too. You'd better come along with me. I'll leave Pierre to keep an eye out in the hall. Thank <laughs> you. 
Who are you? Hello, Pop. What's the matter? Did I scare you? Gosh, it's good to see you. Pop, most joyful to welcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Honorable Mother, send me cable from Honolulu saying Big Boss send you to Europe on buying trip. <laughs> Did not expect to see where the offspring so soon. Mm -hmm. uh, business good? Fine. I was in Rome when I heard you were coming here, so I finished my business in a hurry and hopped a train. Now we can see Paris together. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Most welcome. <laughs> Say, you're looking great. Most fortunate to be looking at all. What do you mean? Attempt on life in last town. Indicate this humble person unwelcome in gay city. Say, I thought you were here on a vacation. A vacation only bluff. I'm here on case for London Banking House. Let me stay and help you, Dad. No. You're here for good time. Go find same. Joy in heart more desirable than bullet. She was honorable co-worker. Murdered tonight before we could have talk. That settles it, Dad. If somebody's gunning for you, I'm staying here. No. Please. Thank you so much. But you must admit there is foundation for my doubt that you came here especially to see me. I am not easily deceived, you know. You old darling, you know I can twist you right around my finger. Well, how much is it today? Well, shall we be quite reasonable and say, uh, a thousand francs? Anything, just to be rid of you. There. Receipt, please. <laughs> well, hello, stranger. Where have you been? How are you, Albert? Uh, this requires your signature. I'll look it over. I haven't seen you in ages. Won't you come in and visit me for a while? Yes, of course. Now, young lady, I'm going to make you give an account of yourself. Sit down. Cigarette? Thank you. You used to come in to see me quite often. That was a long time ago. I've missed you. Now, you're not going to start that again. Please don't. You know Victor and I are engaged. Yes. Some fellows have all the luck. Have you uh, told him about us? He knows we went around quite a bit. But does he know about your letters? Letters? Oh, you mean those foolish, silly love letters. Might not sound so foolish and silly to Victor. You haven't kept them. I treasure them. Albert, you shouldn't. You must tear them up. You've got to. I've got a better idea. I'll deliver them to you in person some evening at my apartment. I didn't think you could be so contemptible. Well, it... It was just uh, an idea. Wait here. Observe closely. Observe what? Don't know. Good detective never ask what and why until after he see. Okay, Pop. I mean, yes, sir. Good morning, Mrs. Lovatine. Well, good morning, Mr. Chan. May I help you, sir? Yes, thank you. Where can I find Mr. Victor Descartes? Uh, right over there, sir. Third window. 
me out the door. The state was wrong. It was swindled. I always knew this place was a nest of thieves. Well, if there's no mistake, I... I'll have every one of you in jail, starting with that swine Dufresne. I tell you, I've been cheated. I demand to see Dufresne. If I can't see him, I'll see Laratine himself. What's the trouble here? Mr. Servier is complaining... I'll tell you, I demand to see the managing director. I've been ghostly swindled. And it's an outrage. I want to see Dufresne. I am the office man. Oh, no, I don't want to do business with small fry uh, That'll do. Take your hand off of me, will you? Don't be rough with him. Just put him outside. You, my muscles. I'll have the law on you for this. You can't do this to me. Why, I'm an old soldier of the Republic. You cheated me and robbed me. Fire, please. Get along or I'll call the police. You mean I'll call the police? I'll get justice and I'll end you all in jail. Good morning. Oh, hello, Charlie. Mr. Latouche. Yes, what is it? This is Mr. Chan. Oh, Mr. Chan. Yes, Mr. Descartes told me about your appointment with Mr. Lamartine. I am the office manager. Will you come this way? I must apologize for such an unpleasant scene. Uh, apology not necessary. Sorry, poor fellow. He, he's hardly human. An unfortunate relic of the war. Shell shock. Xavier, <laughs> he has odd name. Yes, yes, Xavier, Marcel Xavier. Of course, the bank, as a rule, doesn't deal with such petty accounts as his, but Mr. Lamartine's sympathetic nature, he, he's such a fine man, sir. <laughs> Kindness in heart, better than gold in bank. Excuse me, come in. Thank you. Oh, well, Mr. Lamartine's in conference, sir, with Mr. Dufresne. That's quite all right, Fidel. After you, Mr. Chan. Mr. Lamartine, this is Mr. Chan. You had an appointment. So, How are you, sir? So glad to meet. This is Mr. Dufresne, Mr. Chan. How do you do? Much pleasure to meet. Oh, just sit down, Mr. Chan. Thank you so much. Well, Mr. Chan, what can I do for you? You're here on a holiday, I understand. Uh, business, too, about uh, bonds of this bank. <laughs> Our bonds are the best investment in France today, eh, Dufresne? Not better. And now we have a new issue of force, Mr. Chan. Pardon, please. Uh, business uh, about last bond issue. Please forgive deception about vacation. Uh, business very serious for you. What do you mean? Clients in England who buy many of these bonds send me here to investigate fraud in your bank. Fraud? In my bank? Please will explain. Note, numbers are same, but printing not quite. There must be some mistake. Mm, the printing varies unquestionably. It is a forgery. Signature, not forgery. It is my signature. How can such a thing be possible? Someone must have included these with the real bonds at the time you signed them. There are six pairs, each of a different thousand. That means that this business has run through the entire issue. What are we going to do? Investigate. That is why I am here. If this becomes known, there'll be a panic. Thousands of people will suffer. Clients in London of same opinion. Secrecy most necessary. Even police must not know. What do you want us to do, Mr. Chen? First step, must have complete list of all sales of this issue. You shall have it within 24 hours. I'll make a checkup at the other banks immediately. <laughs> Good. Meantime, I'm stopping at Hotel Mazarin. Oh, can I drop you off? No, thank you. I have a car waiting. I'll let you know what I find. Be assured, we'll help you to get to the bottom of this, Mr. Chen. Must turn up many stones to find hiding place of snake. Good day. Good day.
must follow. Who? Him? The important fox must not know hounds pursue. Charlie, my friend, well, how are you? How are you? Now, what are you up to in Paris? <laughs> up to holiday. See Paris, die happy. Good. Well, it'll only take a moment to deposit my monthly insult, and then we'll make a day of it. We'll talk shop at the department, have a good time, and then tonight the best dinner in France. <laughs> Excuse, please. Now, no excuses. I'm a dangerous man to a friend, and if you don't come along, I shall be offended. Only foolish man waste words when argument is lost. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> And then we can take in Egypt and, and the pyramids in the moonlight and all that. And after Egypt? Well, if there's any place you'd like to go, we might take that in too. I suppose a bride-to-be has something to say about her honeymoon trip. Say, you act as though you were in Egypt right now. You, you haven't heard a word I said. Oh, of course I have. You were saying that, uh... Well, what were you saying? Is there anything the matter? Oh, nothing, really. Have I said anything? Oh, of course not. I need some sleep, that's all. We've been out late every night this week. Oh, well, if that's all it is, you can sleep late tomorrow. Come on, let's go somewhere and dance. No, my mind's made up. I'm going to get some sleep. Tomorrow night, then? I suppose I could be persuaded. <laughs> I persuaded you to become engaged to me, didn't I? Well, of course, I had nothing to say about that. Nothing at all, except to say yes. Home, James. Oh, home it is, then. Here we are. Good night. Good night. Say it. I won't say it. Because you know perfectly well that I love you. Good night. Hello. That you, Dufresne? Oh, uh, hello. Did that money come in today? Uh, yes, uh, two million francs. Uh, it's in my box at the bank. Why didn't you meet me as we planned? Why, was that Chinese snooping around? Are you certain that money's in your box? Of course I'm certain. What are you driving at? Then why are you taking the midnight plane to Switzerland? Why, uh, to head off Garan before he tries to sell that last series of bonds you printed, that's why. Now, we've got to be more careful until this thing cools down. I think you're lying to me, Dufresne. I'm not lying. I'm using my head. Hello. Hello. Hello.
Oh, uh, it's you. Come in. I had fallen asleep while reading. I'm sorry I disturbed you. It's perfectly all right. I'm glad you came. Won't you sit down? No, thanks. I'll come for my letters. May I have them? Why, certainly. You didn't believe I was really going to keep them. Well, what else was I to think? I'll prove that you're wrong. Then you're really going to give them back to me? Of course. They're right here in my desk, waiting for you. I'm not the big bad wolf you thought I was. There you are, my dear. Please go and get a policeman. Yes, sir. Oh, hurry, hurry. Oh, oh, Wait, I'm pretty sure. What's the matter in here? I thought it was in the street. I'm pretty sure it was in here. Now get in here. Keep moving. It's murder. She killed him. I didn't kill him. Look, here's the gun. Don't touch that. Don't let her get away. I'm not trying to get away. Police headquarters. to who killed Nardi? During the last few weeks, this girl has been seen with some of the richest men in town. Well, listen to these names. Emmanuel Castaneda from the Argentine. Paul Dorville, French financier. Albert Dufresne, banker. And a half a dozen others. Men worth millions. And one of these do murder? Oh, no, Charlie, no. Here, let me show you. A beautiful girl like Nardi couldn't go around with the men she did without stepping on some other woman's toes. All right. Somewhere, sometime, she aroused the jealousy of some discarded sweetheart who determined to kill her. A woman familiar with Nardi's act, a clever, intelligent woman, smart enough to conceive and execute a fairly ingenious crime. Well, it's a perfect case. Hmm. Only one small detail missing. Yes, what's that? Murder. Perfect case like perfect donut has hope. <laughs> Oh, I see. Same old pessimist, aren't you? <laughs> Optimist only sees donut. Pessimist sees hole. Yes, he's here. Just a moment, please. <laughs> I beg your pardon, gentlemen. Police headquarters on the telephone for you. Oh, thank you, Pierre. Excuse me, Charlie. Thank you. Hello? Yes? Bernard speaking. Who? Where? Yes, yes, of course. I'll come myself at once. Yes. Pierre, my check, please. Yes, sir. Well, Charlie, here's where I plug the hole in your donut. Not satisfied with killing the woman who stole her sweetheart, our murders has now shot the man who threw her over. And this woman is... Uh... Yvette Lamartine, daughter of the banker. Must make correction, please. Well, go ahead. 
Impossible, Miss Lamartine killed Nadi. Impossible? Why? Last night she with me when Nadi killed. With you? That is hole in first donut. Oh. Oh, thank you. All right, Charlie, it was just a guess. But there is no hole in this one. They have caught her. Practically red-handed. We go see? Right. You have all their names and addresses? Yes, sir. You'll be called when your testimony is required. No one is to leave the city. You may go now. So you continue to refuse to tell me the real reason for your visit to this apartment? I merely dropped in to say hello. We were friends. Friends? How long had you known Mr. Dufresne? Since he became my father's assistant two years ago. Oh, come now, Miss Lamartine. Please, let's be reasonable. Surely you don't expect us to believe your fantastic story of a mysterious black-gloved hand which you say threw a gun into this room? I told you the truth. You were discovered in this room with a gun in your hand from which one shot had been fired. You made a desperate effort to escape. Aren't those the facts? Why? Well, Aren't those the facts? Yes. Good. Now we're getting somewhere. How long had you been on intimate terms with Albert Dufresne? I'd rather not understand you. I mean, how long have you been in the habit of paying visits at this apartment at night, alone? I refuse to answer such a question. Very well, then. Another little question. Why did you kill Albert Dufresne? I didn't kill him. I told you what happened. The shot was fired from in there, and someone threw the gun into this room. You came here tonight because you knew he was going away. He was tired of you. In a fit of jealousy, you shot him. It isn't true. I didn't do it. I didn't kill him. Ready, Gaston? Ready, sir. Fingerprint her. Have Marchand compare them. Yes, sir. Over here, please. This way, please. Place the three fingers of the right hand on this pad. Then press them on this paper. What's going on around here? You'll be properly informed. Now, look here. I come up to see my friend Albert, and I find the entire place surrounded by hundreds of policemen. Now, what is this? Look, we want to see Albert. Albert Dufresne is dead. Murdered. <gasps> Did I understand you to say Albert has been murdered? Yes. You say you're a friend of his. A very good friend. Laverne. Take down this gentleman's answers to my questions. That's all, thank you. to believe you, but facts now are very necessary. You are engaged to a very nice young man. You must have had reason for presence here. Why? Desire to help. You that is. Why? Is 
something wrong? Step inside, please. You may go now. I beg your pardon, but this murder has been a great shock to me. Murder? Not Mr. Dufresne? Come in, please. I'll answer all your questions. Good evening, Mr. Chan. When did it happen? Who did it? Just who are you? I'm Henry Latouche of the Lamartine Bank. I'm Mr. Dufresne's close associate. I came in to see him on a matter of importance connected with the... Sit down, please. I'll question you later. All through, sir. Well, the fingerprints on the gun are hers, all right. There's a small scar on her right thumb, which makes identification easy. Good. All right, that's all. Take her away. Miss Lamartine. Well, Charlie? Do you believe young lady guilty? Don't you? A hasty conclusion, like gunpowder, easy to explode. Oh. Charlie, let's have it. What have you found? Answer in there. But I've already inspected this room. <laughs> and I looked out here, too. Find nothing? Not a thing. No burnt match, no monogram cigarette stub, not even the threads torn from a tweed suit. <laughs> uh, flowers maybe say something. Flowers? What do you mean? By George, look at that. That stem must have been broken during the last hour. Why, the flower's not even wilted. It looks as if someone may have come up here by this balcony, doesn't it? That is hole in second donut. Mm. Ooh, come for a bed now, most desirable. Oh, I see. You can't take it, Charlie, can you? Charlie Chan, very sleepy. <laughs> this is terrible, Mr. Chan. Terrible. Isn't there something that I can do? Now, just take it easy, old man. I'll be with you in just a moment. Charlie, it's an open and shut case. In spite of your donuts, that young lady is going to find it very difficult to explain her fingerprints on that gun. Very difficult to explain hole and donut, but hole always there. <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> I know you did not kill anybody. I'm sorry, Pop. But I got a lot to tell you. I made notes. <laughs> tell me on the way. Okay, Pop. Say, Pop. I... Wait, please. You watch here all evening? Sure. And I saw... Please. Perhaps you see men on crutches come out. Maybe after you hear gunshot? Yeah. The same guy I saw at the bank this morning. How'd you know? You follow? I'll say I did. 
He got into an old taxi and I trailed it. I never let it out of my sight. And when he stopped about five miles from here, a limousine pulled up alongside and he got into it. Can you beat that? Well, what happened next? I stepped on the gas and got close enough to spot the car's number. But it was a high-powered baby. And he got away from me. Mm. Eyes of kitten open only after nine days. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. That isn't all. When I came back to Dufresne's apartment, I saw the same limousine. I checked the license plate, and some guy I've never seen before came out of the house with a girl, and they got into it and drove away. Man have walking stick? Yes. The girl have small round hat? That's them. Do you know them? Man is artist. He draws very funny pictures. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, this is a surprise. Mm -hmm. And this time, Mr. Chan, I'm not going to ask you to have a little blinky, but I want you to have a drink. <laughs> much pleasure. Sit down, please. Thank you so much. You know, Mr. Chan, I'm all broken up about this thing. Albert Dufresne was one of my closest friends. And can you imagine Yvette Lamartine doing a thing like that. Excuse, please. Miss Lamartine did not kill. Guilty man is crippled soldier. Name, Marcel Zabier. Uh, maybe you can give me information. I? <laughs> why, well, gladly, of course, if I can. But uh, why me? Tonight, after murder, Zabier come from Dufresne apartment, depart in taxi cab, and later get into your car. My car? You mean to say that this man used my car? For what? Maybe to take off disguise? I don't understand. Oh, I see. This Xavier character is only a disguise for the murderer. He commits his crime, escapes in a taxi, uses somebody's car in which to take off his makeup, and then steps out in his true character with no one the wiser. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> Very clever idea. <laughs> You didn't come up here thinking I might be Xavier. <laughs> like all detectives, must consider every possibility. <laughs> well, it's a lucky thing for me that uh, Xavier bumped into me last night in front of that cafe. You remember? Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Please forgive stupid error. Why, certainly, Mr. Chan. All's forgiven. I must <laughs> go now. So sorry to disturb. Well, that's quite all right. I'm sorry I couldn't have been of any more help to you. On contrary, have been most helpful. Oh, your hat. Thank you so yeah. much. Good night. Good night. What's the idea? You are leaving on long journey? Uh, why, I... Uh... Inside, please. Little keyhole. Big friend to stupid detective.
Have you found something, Dad? Broken bank seal, found at Dufresne apartment, matches perfectly with this broken seal. That man is the murderer. This washes the case up, doesn't it, Dad? He killed Dufresne and the dancer Nardi. No. Night Nardi killed this man with me. Must find murderer of Nardi. C19337 Series M. C19337 Series M. Right. D31286 Series L. D31286 Series L. Right. I had to break a date with Lucille tonight, down the luck. Wonder what the idea of the bond checkup is. I don't know. Old lamartine has been buzzing about all day like a fly with one wing. But it's impossible, Mr. Chan. I have no authority to give you Mr. Xavier's address. To show you matter most important. No, I can't and I won't. That's final, Mr. Chan. What is so final, Bedell? Perhaps I can be of service. Most humble apologists make so much trouble, but desire to know where I can find Marcel Xavier. May I ask why, Mr. Chan? This morning, I hear him make threat against man now dead. So he did, so he did. Get Xavier's card at once. Of course, you're going to arrest him. Canary bird out of cage may fly far. Ah, poor Dufresne. What a tragedy. To be shot down in the very prime of life. He was a splendid man, Mr. Chen. A splendid man. Ah, here we are. Marcel Xavier. Rue Dupont, number 17. Rather a nasty neighborhood, Mr. Chen. Charlie! Been looking all over for you. You've got to help Yvette. Isn't this something you can do? I don't believe she killed him. Even if she was in his apartment, she must have had some good reason for being there. Faith is best foundation for happy future. Then you don't think she did it either? Can I show you young lady is innocent? Oh, I knew it. Oh, she couldn't have done it, Charlie. But innocence must be proven. You would like to help? Would I? Say, I, I, I'd do anything. I'd, I, I'd tear up the stones in the street. Uh, not necessary. You can please help me to this address? Rue de Pont, 17. Uh, come on, Charlie, let's go. Phone's been ringing for ten minutes. It's getting on my nerves. Don't open your mouth. Hello? Yes, Steve Corday? Yes. The meddling Chinese is on his way to Zambia. I'll meet you there right away. All right. Who was that? Where's my father going? Where is Javier? Try and find out. Go back to car and wait. If you're going down there, I'm going with you. Take this. What about you? Always carry spare in case of blowout.
solve this. What are you going to do? You cannot see content to Zunata until Shell is cracked. Look. Why? There aren't any on it. Man cannot drink from glass without touching. Duffy was all shot up during the war. Maybe he has to wear gloves. You have seen him at bank perhaps many times. He wear gloves? I, I don't remember. Have seen Xavier at airport upon arrival in city. On street, night Nardi killed, and in bank. No gloves. You certainly got an eye for detail. Grain of sand and I may hide mountain. Strange for man to wear gloves inside and outside with bare hands. Say, that is odd. Blow out candle. Come. Look. Quiet. Only bullfrog. A creepy place, isn't it? Many strange crimes committed in the sewers of Paris.
Charlie. Lamartine Bonds. 19337. Very clever forgeries. Forgeries? Yes. And here are tools for engraving. And printing machine. So that's why we were checking up that series of bonds in the bank today. Yes. Did you find something, Charlie? List of bond forgeries. Why, that's the sketch Max made last night at the cafe. Charlie, do you think? Did you hear that? Turn out the lights. Are you all right, Charlie? Yes, thank you so much. Marksmanship, most excellent, but made mistake of shooting a flashlight on end of moving broomstick. You meddling devil. Honorable ancestors refute suggested kinship. Hands down, please. Someone's coming. Both behind me, man. We may be in here. We'll rush. Hello. Well, Charlie. Dad, I'm glad you're all right. We seem to arrive here ahead of your Mr. Zavier, all right? When Zavier phoned Corday, I knew you were on the spot. I got hold of Mr. Renard. Yes, Charlie, he told me all about it. Don't worry. We'll take care of this Xavier when he shows up. You two men stay here. Go back upstairs and tell the sergeant. Wait, please. Uh, not necessary. What's that? Show you. Stand up. You got him, didn't you, Pop? That's Marcel Xavier. Correction, please. There is no Marcel Xavier. No, Xavier. Who the devil is he? Please to remove gloves. Note, hands not those of beggar. Tell me what's all this about. Answer concealed, maybe. Behind Paul's face. Mr. Latouche. All right, Charlie, I'm waiting for the answer. Bond forgery plot conceived by very clever criminals, Corday and Latouche. Between them, they create fictitious character Marcel Xavier. When Latouche is Xavier, Corday is Corday. When Corday is Xavier, Latouche is Latouche. Oh, I begin to see. 
system gives both men perfect alibi. Oh, by George, that is clever. How did you guess it, Charlie? Correction, please. Did not guess. Gentlemen who give me Xavier's address make mistake of leaving same handwriting down here on list of uh, bond numbers. Oh. See? Hmm. Also, gentlemen, overplay hand in acting part of Xavier for me. Both know I go to cafe. Latouche appear as Xavier and Corday give him money. Inside the cafe, Corday watch me while Latouche kill my assistant. Assistant? Yes, the dancer, Mardi. Next morning, Corday know I go to bank. He appears Xavier and play scene with Latouche. But what about Dufresne? Dufresne was accomplice in bank who tried to cheat Latouche and Corday. Tonight, when Dufresne planned to leave city with money received from bond forgeries, Corday arrived in the apartment as Xavier, kill him, and later take off disguise and car. Well, good work, Charlie. All right, Laverne. Take him away. Come on. Uh, may, may see you, please. My sir. Must trouble you to release other assistant from prison. Other assistant? Yes. Miss Lamartine. You see, she in Dufresne apartment to get information. Very important letters for me. But I don't see. Oh. So the age of chivalry isn't dead after all. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, come along, Charlie. You tell me all about it over a cup of coffee. And uh, donuts? Yes. <laughs> Now, folks, it's time to say good night. We sincerely appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night.